Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So I hope you're staying safe and healthy. So these days I kept on working on my thesis and my progress has been going well and taking little steps every day. Today I just talked to my thesis supervisor and she's pretty happy about my writing progress. Um, there's a lot to include in the uh, 100 pages to 120 pages of writing. And my thesis topic is on art journaling. So I hosted a uh, visual journal or art journal workshop with three of my academic colleagues. And uh, we sketched and we, we discussed our process, um, drawing and writing in art journals over a six week period. And I have to, uh, I had to record those Zoom meetings and analyze the information, including the art journal entries we created during the uh, six week period. So that's a lot of work. It seems like not very much, but uh, we created over 30 pieces of art journals and uh, a lot of conversations to analyze, to draw out meaning that is really uh, significant to the field of art education. So today in this video, I will show you three watercolor palettes that I have used over the years. Okay, so first of all, let's have a closer look at my Sakura Koi palette. Um, as you can see, it's made of uh, white plastic. It's super light. That it contains so many colors in it. It's really portable, and it's not a burden at all for your bag. And um, it has 24 squares of colors in it. And all of these colors were, were, pretty, were very useful. And I use many of these colors very often. About half of them are running out. And for this palette, I use I used this most of the time when I was um, outdoors sketching before the pandemic. Um, so I sketched a lot of cityscapes and landscapes with this palette. And the colors that are running out are um, the two yellows, light yellow, medium yellow, and this peach color, the ultramarine blue, the purple, also the um, the greens. I use these colors very often too, and these three blues. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and this is another kind of uh, a blue that I like to use for the water. And um, also I use a lot of yellow ochre for painting almost anything, like bread, um, or like buildings. A lot of things in this world have the uh, yellow ochre color. And I also use quite a lot of uh, brown and dark brown. And it folds very easily. You can open it really easily. And there's a really big area for mixing colors. It comes with, an, with another mix, mixing tray where you can attach it over here, but I didn't use it because I don't need it. There's a quite, already a lot of space here for mixing. And this palette costs about $27 on Amazon. Um, I think in the art supply stores, are, they're more pricey. But if you buy from Amazon, it's about $27. And the next palette I'm gonna show you is the is this Mongyo watercolor palette. It's metallic and it's a bit more heavier than the plastic one, of course. So this has 12 colors in it, and I added one more color there, turquoise blue, because I use turquoise blue quite often. Let's see the colors that I use most often are, again, yellow ochre. I love yellow ochre for painting bread and cakes, food. A lot of food has, um, you know, the color of yellow ochre and orange and yellow. And I also use quite a bit of magenta. Also this uh, burnt sienna or brown. Uh, my ultramarine blue is always running low, running out. Uh, because I use this for painting shadows, uh, for painting the sky, and pretty much everything that I need to mix a shadow color. I, I use ultramarine blue. And I also use quite a bit of red and green. And these three, these three colors, I rarely use them. This one is black. I almost never use black. Unless uh, some packages, you know, has a really dense black color, I sometimes use black. 
But for black objects, my, I mix my own black by mixing ultramarine blue and purple. Let's see, so these colors, are, you can't really see what they are, so I'm going to mix them on, on a piece of paper. Um, so this Mongyo palette costs about um, $25 from my art supply store. So it's quite affordable. I think you can also buy it on Amazon. It's about $25. And the colors last for a long time. It's kind of interesting that when I, over the years, when I try the different brand of palettes, some of the colors, um, the, the cakes ran out really fast. The ones that ran out really fast means that they use a lot of fillers instead of true paint pigments. And those cheap paints have a chalky quality. The colors are not so vibrant and the, uh, the colors on paper actually uh, fade away after some time. The uh, Etcher watercolor palette that I'm currently using for about two months now. And it's really big. It has 24 colors in it. 12 here and 12 here. And I found all of these colors are very useful. And I'm most, as you can see, all, I'm using all of these colors. Um, they have a variety of yellows and orange and red and pinks. A lot of pink purples, a lot of greens, a lot of blues, and dark browns and black. All of these colors are uh, very useful for me. And so here's the color sheet that I made when I first got this uh, extra watercolor palette so you can see the colors better all right so as you can see the colors are really really vibrant attractive and inspiring I really love that they have a variety of different browns this one's a red brown medium brown and darker browns over here that I use very often for painting food and nature and also a lot of greens blues so I think the this advantage of this uh, etcher watercolor palette is that um, I think it's too long, right? So when I'm outdoors, when, when I'm holding my sketchbook on, on one lap, on my lap, and this is quite heavy and sometimes I'm worried that I might lose balance holding this. This is quite heavy. Um, it's really white. I actually prefer using watercolor palettes about this side, palm side, it's really easier to hold and I won't lose balance holding it or also the Sakura Koi watercolors, it's so light, it's super light yeah, this is wisely designed watercolor palette and these colors actually last for a long time for this one I'll be using um, this palette for over a year and as you can see pretty much all the colors are still here and I think the Sakura Koi is really helpful for beginners because you can see very clearly of uh, what each color looks like compared to the other two palettes that the, uh, the blues and greens look pretty much like black. So you can identify uh, the greens and blues really well in here and also the browns. You can see them pretty clearly and know where they are. So sometimes I get kind of confused using um, some watercolor palettes like this one so as you can see all of these colors look pretty much like black it's hard to know which color is which unless I, I check my uh, color chart that I made by myself okay these colors are actually really vibrant than they look so overall I really recommend the uh, Sakura Koi watercolors for for you know for artists of all levels it's just really easy to use it's portable it's light and you can see the colors so clearly. I think this is my um, all-time favorite. And as you can see, all of my uh, watercolor palettes are so colorful in the mixing areas because I, I almost never, never clean these areas because I always like using the leftover colors. For example, if I'm painting a vegetable or plant, 
I can just use this leftover green directly from here instead of uh, taking the time to uh, mix. Okay, so same as here, I can use these greens directly and um, some of these grayish shadow colors. These shadow colors, I can reuse them for painting shadows instead of mixing, taking the time to uh, mix again. It really saves time to use these leftover colors instead of uh, cleaning these up very often. Colors. And the colors that I use most often are um, yellow ochre, brown or burnt sienna, yellow and orange and magenta, and ultramarine blue and viridian green. So that's how many colors that I use most often. So eight color. I think it's my minimalistic watercolors that I need. So eight colors is all I need for painting almost anything. Just eight colors. Okay, so all of these are um, colors are inspiring, but I don't use some of the colors that often. Um, so my suggestion for buying a watercolor palette is that you don't have to buy a watercolor palette that has so many colors in it, like 24 or, or even 36 or 72 colors. I think it's too crazy to buy a 72 uh, watercolor palette. Uh, I think there's way too many colors in, in it. I don't need that many colors to do a good sketch or even a painting. A lot of um, uh, art, watercolor artists I, that I know, they use a very limited palette too. To keep them, their palette to a limited 8 to 12 colors. Um, we don't need all of the colors in, in, the, in the palette. So if you're a beginner and you want to stay, um, stay to the quality of the watercolors and, uh, and at the same time you want to buy something affordable, then I, could, I would recommend you to get a, a watercolor palette with 12 colors in it. I think that's good enough to get started. You don't need a lot of colors. Okay. I think 24 colors is the maximum colors that we need for watercolor sketching and painting. Okay, and that's it for today's video. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. If you have any questions about the watercolor palette that I used, just feel free, don't hesitate to leave me a comment below. So I try to update my channel quite often every week. And I'll see you next time.